of all right we are live and waiting for people to join us here we are again on june the 10th and back for another wednesday night live prayer service you guys doing good doing good you're doing great great camps next week camps next week you're getting all your ducks in a row are they in a row they're getting in a row good most of them are first person to sign on miss mandy ohar good evening to you i hope the ohar family is having a good week kathy neils says hey hey kathy hope y'all are doing well too a lot of people signing on real quick here debbie Lewis, Jerry, and Debbie are here. Hey, y'all. Linda and Ed are here. William. And I uh, ask you, like I do each week, if you could uh, share this. Just to, it just helps let people know that we are live. And if you share it on your page and you see anyone trying to communicate with us on that shared post, just remind them we can't see that. They're going to have to come back to this main one. Miss Donna Rose is here. Hey, Donna. Somebody said they saw Gwen? Yeah. I didn't see her. Above Mandy. Oh. Yeah, I don't see her. But I believe you. Hey, Gwen. Hope y'all doing well. Colleen Condon. Her Facebook avatar says hi. Did you guys do a Facebook avatar? I haven't. Come on, y'all. I did, did it. Do? I did it, but I didn't post it. Oh. So... Miss Elaine Augustine said, hello, it was great to praise God in the sanctuary last Sunday. Amen, Miss Elaine. I agree with you. It was awesome. So awesome to see people in services on Sunday. And I'm looking forward to another weekend of being back together. The Olivers are here. Uh, Kathy and Dick, I hope y'all are doing well. Hope you're having a good week. And we got, uh, looks like 22 people have come on. I'll wait till they get... It's to closer to 30 before we begin. Mandy's saying, I did one too and did not post it either. Oh, the avatar. Yeah. Miss Linda Copestick. Hey, Linda. It's good to see you. I agree, Mandy. I, I I did mine, and I didn't think it looked much like me. Uh, so I may need to try again. Maybe I didn't do it right. Did it get your hair cut accurately? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have, to, uh, I'll have to show you later. I think I have it saved on my phone. Hello from the Mizell family. <laughs> hey, David. Good to see you on here with us. All right, as y'all are signing on, uh, it looks... Uh, like we got about 20 people, so we'll begin. Um, and I'm going to do things a little different this week. Uh, we are going to start off with some icebreaker questions just to spend a little time together. Uh, but I also, here at the front of the time together tonight, uh, I want to take any questions from you. So if you have any questions, general questions about uh, church, uh, church life, uh, or anything else you want to hear, see if we got an answer about, um, feel free to throw those out. And then we're going to get into a time of prayer. So questions first. Um, and you can, as we do these icebreaker questions, if you want to mix those in, I'll try to catch those as they come through. But let's start with an icebreaker. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Which one of these should I choose? All right. I'm going to go with, what do you think, Brother Ron? Which one should I choose? Should I do this one? The describe yourself? Yeah. All right. If you had to describe yourself in three words, what would those three words be? If you had to describe yourself with three words, what would those three words be? Ready, set, go. You guys want to go first? Old, fat, and ugly. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true at all. Well, you asked what, how I would describe it. <laughs> I feel like whatever I say is either going to be like, it's either going to be like accidentally prideful or self-deprecating. Mm. Well, only one way to find out. I don't know. Come back to me. Okay, I will. I, I need to think Kathy Neal says, funny, smart, and kind. 
And I think that is accurate, Miss Kathy. Very good. Mandy Ohar says, loyal, friendly, and kind. And I would agree with that. Very good. Are these the only two folks who are going to respond? Come on. Three words that you would describe, you'd use to describe yourself. Anybody else? Hmm. I don't see any other responses. All right, so I'll let you let that simmer a little bit, let you think about it, and I'll ask you another one. <laughs> Dick says, is, I'm guessing that's Dick, it says fat, dumb, and happy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ms. Linda Howard says, encourager, writing things that the Lord gives me, a writer, and grateful. Very good. I like that. <laughs> Mandy Ohar, they got scared from Brandon's response. Yeah. He scared everybody. Sorry. Come on, man. Uh, very good. Let me ask you another question. Hmm. What is your favorite thing to do? We're coming up. We're in the summertime, right? Are we officially in the summertime? Yeah. Yes, we're officially in the summertime. What is your favorite thing to do in the summer? What's your favorite thing to do in the summer? Make it short and sweet. Baseball. Baseball. Is used, to, used to be playing. Watching Major League Baseball? Yeah. Will Major League Baseball make it back to the TV? I'm going to be so upset if it's not. Uh, they're having a hard time agreeing. Mimi says, loving, encouraging, and sensitive. Hey, Mimi, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for answering. Those are good answers. Emily Zortman is answering our summer question. She says, going to the beach. Going to the beach. Uh, Jennifer Dolly says, the springs. Uh, Mandy Ohar says, go to the pool. My wife says, vacation. Uh, Debbie Lewis says, Disney. Is Disney World open? Anybody know? Come on, Debbie. You like to go to Disney any time of the year. <laughs> That's true. He's got a good point. Uh, Ashley Perry says, vacation. Summer vacation. Gwen says, the beach. Uh, Tori. Amanda Larry says, camp. And that is going to happen very soon. Uh, Kathy Smith says beach and pool. So a lot of them. Of course, we're Florida people. Beach and pool answers. Uh, Donna, surprisingly, said Disney World. <laughs> I wonder. Her and Debbie, both of them said Disney World. I don't think anybody else has said Disney World so far. Linda Howard says walking in the North Carolina mountains, which is where you guys will be soon. The students are going to camp up in the North Carolina mountains. Some cool air up there. Uh, Elaine Augustine says, go to Maine for the summer. That sounds fun. Linda Copestick uh, answering the three-word description question, caring, friendly, and concerned. And I'd agree with that, Linda. Thank you. And they're saying not yet. Disney World's not open yet. They open July 11th and 15th. July 11th and 15th. Now, Debbie and Donna, are y'all going to be there on July 11th, the opening day? Uh, Linda Copestick, uh, gardening and visiting mom all I can in the summer. Those are good answers. I'm actually, I like the summer, so I, I don't mind the heat too, too much. Uh, near the end of summer, I'm ready for the fall, but I actually look forward to the summer weather. And, uh, Dick and Kathy hang around the pool and cook out. That's some good summer stuff right there. Very good. Well, that's all we'll do right now on our icebreaker questions. We'll come back to some at the end. Um, feel free to keep pushing those through if you want to. And also, now is the time to uh, give us some, uh, throw out some questions. If you got any questions at all, I want this to be a, a place where we can answer those. All right, I do want to update you, so hopefully you're, you're listening clearly right now uh, because I want uh, to make sure this is clear. We, of course, as we've announced, have our uh, worship schedule set up for this weekend with a Thursday night service tomorrow night. Uh, we had a good time worshiping with those folks last Thursday. We're going to do that again tomorrow night, and then we'll do our other two services, just like we did last weekend. We'll do those other two services on Sunday, 9 a.m., senior adult um, service, and uh, the those who have medical conditions, and then also the 1030 service right here in the community center. Uh, but we have met as a staff this week, and we've decided to make a change after this weekend. Again, this is after this weekend, all right? 
not this week, after this weekend. So into next weekend, which I'll make sure I look at the dates so that I'm very clear here. As we get into next week, we will not meet on Thursday nights anymore. We're going to phase out of Thursday nights. So on the 18th, even if you signed up for that Thursday night, we are not meeting on Thursday nights moving forward after this week. So starting the 18th, no Thursday night services. We're going to go to just two services, the 9 o'clock service and the 1030. The 9 o'clock service is going to remain, it's going to, going to remain a senior adult and, and medically sensitive, um, medically vulnerable service. Uh, and you have to reserve a spot for that service. So we want to make sure we're careful about how many people are in the room and we can only handle so many and keep things cautious and safe and distance right. So that service, we will, it will remain as a reserve, reservation only service. However, starting on the 21st, uh, the 1030 service, we will open the doors for anyone who wants to come because we have plenty of seating behind me. Uh, we're going to put out several seats, have several hundred seats, so that uh, as you come in, we can take you to an assigned area and uh, space you out appropriately. So you will not have to, after this weekend, if you're coming to the 1030 service, you will not have to reserve a spot. You'll just come at 1030, an usher will seat you, and, uh, and that's the way we'll roll for a while. All right, so that will, uh, that, that'll feel a little bit better, feel a little more looser, and uh, more loose, and uh, let me know if you've got any questions on that. Hopefully that's clear. You guys want to add anything? Did I miss anything on that? I don't think so. All right. But again, this week, we're looking forward to worshiping with those on Thursday. And let me know if you have any questions about those changes. Ms. Lane Augustine writes, how does our church deal with missions? Is our giving for missions included in our tithes and offerings? Very good question. So as Southern Baptists, uh, we are part of something called the Cooperative Program. So we are part of a convention, a network of churches, over 40,000 churches across the United States. And we give to what's called the Cooperative Program. So a percentage of our annual income that comes in through tithes and offerings goes to what's called the Cooperative Program. And that goes to first the Florida Baptist Convention, and a portion of that stays in state and helps with a church planning efforts in our state. It helps uh, pay the salaries of our convention workers. So we actually have one of our uh, Florida Baptist Convention um, employees. He's one of the leaders uh, for the convention is Ben Brawley. He, he's one of our members. So uh, th those monies go to help keep the Florida Baptist Convention focused on, again, training in churches and doing a lot of good work. And then the, the rest of that money goes to uh, the, uh, the National Convention and it's allocated. You can go to the Southern Baptist Convention website and see how that's allocated. And a portion of that that goes to uh, the National Headquarters, it goes to uh, the, the uh, North American Mission Board and the International Mission Board, which are, uh, they have missionary, there's missionary, mission work all over the, the, the nation, the United States, again, church planning and uh, different uh, inner city mission efforts and endeavors. Uh, and then there's global efforts being made uh, through um, that are Southern Baptists are doing in that uh, there's people out, uh, thousands of missionaries that are being funded through the cooperative program that are out on the, uh, the international mission field. And so that's one way that as you give goes to those places. And then also as you give, uh, we do mission work through our local church here. And so um, at our business meetings, you can look at the missions portion of our budget and see where that money goes. Hopefully that answers your question. Great question, uh, especially if you're new to Southern Baptist life. Um, we can help you answer more there, or you can go to the Southern Baptist Convention website and uh, explore some more explanations there. Anybody else got a, another question? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Anybody else? I don't see any other questions, but throw them out there as you need to. All right, so I'm going to read a verse of scripture, and this is going to be, I'm going to go first, and it's going to be a little more uh, interactive. Uh, another question, Kevin Stike is asking overall, how did the Sunday service go? I thought it went very well. You know, I could tell that it didn't feel completely normal yet. 
because of some of the restrictions and uh, lower numbers being in each of the services. So I think everyone felt a little, um, you probably felt a little stiff and a little different, um, but you know, that's what we anticipated. But overall, I thought uh, the services were great simply because we were back together. So and everyone cooperated. Yep. Uh, Linda Copestick, here's a big one. What's your feeling with all this protest? I'm so uneasy with it and find myself going back and forth with emotions. Wish we could have a roundtable discussion with different people. Linda, you have no clue how timely that question is because we've been having those discussions all week. And I'll say, I'll say something very quickly. Um, and I've said things in my sermons over the last couple weeks uh, about listening to people who are in the black community who are close to you, in close proximity to you, in your church family, neighbors, and just simply having those conversations, you know, to understand how they're uh, perceiving things and processing things. And, and I think you'll learn a lot there. Not only that, I think we have a responsibility of listening to those in our law enforcement community and understanding the challenges that they're facing. And I'll say this, I think that people have the freedom to protest, right? So we live in a country where there's freedom to peacefully protest. I don't think the looting is right. I think from a Christian perspective, we can never condone that. We never condone meeting uh, what people would even perceive as violence with violence, or we'd never condone the, the looting of businesses and the burning of businesses. As a Christian, we can never condone that. However, the protesting, people are free to protest. Um, so that is my answer to that. But I will say this, here's my big uh, thing for us to think about. Can we maintain an honor and a respect and a love and a prayerfulness for our law enforcement community? Can we continue to appreciate what they do and pray for them and, uh, and love those who are in our church and, and appreciate them for putting their lives on the line each and every day to protect us? Can we do that? And at the same time, you know, do our job as a church to, uh, to, to be honest and to work towards making sure that racism is something that we never, um, you know, would um, put up with. Absolutely, I, it, there's, there's this. It seems like there's this pick a side type of thing, and I don't think, especially the church, needs to lead the way to go. Hey, listen, we we are for our law enforcement. We appreciate those men and women in uniform in our community. Right. And I think, you know, over here you have another conversation of, hey, does racism exist? Yeah, it's always existed and it always will exist. And the church should be the first one to go, hey, as Christians, you know, we're to see people through the eyes of Jesus. And so we're always going to need to be the ones to go, hey, we're not going to put up with it. And we're going to do our part to make sure that we call it out. So that's my answer to that. And so as we move forward, I want us to um, make sure that we maintain that balance. And, uh, and so we are going to have a roundtable discussion in the next couple weeks. Uh, so it's not going to be next week, but probably the following week, where, where I'm going to mediate a discussion between some of our African-American brothers and sisters in Christ um, and some other folks who have stories and, and different backgrounds, and then also some of our law enforcement officers. And we're all going to sit down, and, and I'm praying that it'll be an opportunity for us to have a, a civil conversation, a Christ-centered conversation, an open conversation. Um, we're even right here at Schindler Drive. And so we're going to do that. We're going to make that video available for everyone to see. And, uh, and we're just going to seek to continue to be humble and keep our eyes on Jesus, be all about the gospel, um, and, and work towards a solution to these things. Very good question. And that was a big question, Linda, but I appreciate your boldness to ask it. All right, so I don't see anybody else asking any questions. If you've got a follow-up question to that or a comment, feel free to uh, post it, and I'll, I'll read it or respond to it. Okay. Well, I want, to, I want to have more of an interactive uh, devotion for my part, guys. Um, so I'm just thinking about, you know, we're called to run a race. You know, Paul uses that metaphor, uh, compares our spiritual journey, our spiritual uh, walk in life to, to a race. And so we're all running in that race if we're in Christ. And uh, we need to uh, continuously uh, lean on the Lord and just seek to be running that race well. And Paul talks about that. 
and also the writer of Hebrews talks about that. We're not sure who wrote Hebrews. Uh, but it says in Hebrews chapter 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So when we talk about running a race, the writer of Hebrews talks about laying aside every weight in sin. So every weight, which I believe it's kind of talking about distractions, uh, things that can weigh us down, and then he uh, distinguishes that from sin. So every weight and sin. And I'm just curious as to what you would say. So I'm imagining I'm in like a small group or Sunday school class and tossing out a question to say, in this leg of our race, which has not been an easy one, right? Not only have we dealt with the COVID stuff, but we also have dealt with other challenges and other things that have come up throughout our nation, family issues maybe, private, you know, in your home type stuff you've gone through. What are some things in this leg of the race that, you know, generally speaking maybe would you say that are possibly weighing people down? Things that are distracting people right now in this leg of the race that we're called to run well for Christ. How would you answer that? You put your answer here and I'll read it. Again, what are some weights, what are some sins and distractions that the enemy is using to get people's eye off of the prize and causing people to slow down in their race? I'll awkwardly wait in silence until someone answers. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer Diley says conspiracy theories. I think it's a good one. I think that is a good one. And that is, um, what do I want to say to this? And you guys can jump in. You know, I think God's given us a brain, and we certainly don't need to, we need to make sure wool's not being pulled over our eyes, and we need to be thinking through things, and, and we know that, you know, often things aren't, always as they appear, um, but you do have to be careful about running down rabbit holes of conspiracy theories. And, and sometimes you have to remember that does the, do people in our country, the leaders, do they uh, often with ill motive um, take situations and current events and spin them to uh, work out their own, own agenda? Of course they do, right? They always have. Um, but I think we should distinguish the difference between a conspiracy theory and capitalizing on things to get someone's agenda accomplished. And so that's important to remember that there is a difference and there is a danger in bogging yourself down with too many conspiracy theories and there's a lot of those out there. And social media sometimes, social media is a blessing but my goodness sometimes it can be so distracting and you know, every single week you can have another conspiracy theory being cranked out there. Um, y'all are giving some good, I have to scroll back up because y'all gave some good. The meteor, media's portray, uh, portrayal of only negative things creating division. And Scott, I think you're right. I think the, uh, it's hard to know what media outlet you can trust these days. And I'm waiting for a neutral media outlet to come along. <laughs> it seems like there's a market for it, but then uh, you know, you just wonder why um, it seems like you can't seem to find news that isn't being spun. Uh, and so you're right. We've got to be careful about that. And sometimes I think it's good to uh, turn off the TV, uh, to spend more time talking to the people who are in close proximity with you. Uh, Rebecca says comparison. Yes. And um, I'm thinking that you may... Baby, you can clarify on this, but are you talking about comparison with like your Christian walk, like seeing where somebody else is, is in their Christian walk or seeing where somebody else is in their life as it's being like staged and presented on social media and kind of feeling inferior to and, and it messing with your mind and your heart? Give me some clarification and I'll come back to it. Kay Newhouse agrees. People listening to the media, uh, the rioting. Yep, we've hit on that, uh, Miss Kathy. Um, I agree. I, Linda Copestick, thank you. It needs to be talked about. I've been having conversations with various people and neighbors, and this really weighs heavy on my heart. Me too, Linda. So again, we need to do both of those things well. You know, we, we can show that honor and respect and then also have real conversations about um, 
you know, the things in our, in our culture that we as Christians need to be helping with. Uh, Kathy Oliver, Dirty Politics, uh, Linda Howard says, I use God's word to filter everything I hear and see and think. And that is so important, Miss Linda, and I, I appreciate you um, sharing that. And you're ahead of me there because uh, at the end of the day, it's about being pursuers of truth. And that's really what we're asking and talking about here is where is truth found? And we, you can't pursue truth you know, at a media outlet. Uh, truth can only be pursued and understood by turning my head downward and with a humble heart taking in God's Word and filtering, as Ms. Linda just said, everything that I hear through the lens of Scripture, right? And that really needs to be at the heart of every conversation. And that's why I encourage you, anytime you get into a heated conversation, if it's with a, another believer, just say this. Say, hey, how about this? How about we go to the Word and really seek to understand what it has to say about this conversation that we're ha having. Uh, the Word of God is sufficient. Scripture is sufficient. Uh, it is going to dictate as a church what we're going to do it's going to remain central um, and we're going to build everything on that foundation of God's Word and it should also be so in our individual lives do you guys want to add anything well I was gonna say uh, Miss Linda I love that you said that because sometimes we sometimes we do the opposite we want to take scripture and filter it through through what we already think hmm. and and see it the way that we, we want to mold it to what we form an opinion about something and then we want to want to go to scripture and mold it to what what we think fits what, what I think fits what what my opinion is or what I want it to say instead of filtering instead of letting it change me and mold me mm. um, and that when when I had somebody explain that that's the way we approach scripture when, when somebody explained that to me it, it changes the way that we approach scripture so I'm, I'm glad that you said that that's right I think sometimes we try to take scripture and twist it Mm -hmm. to make us feel like we're okay yeah. and that what we're doing is fine without letting God really convict us of mm -hmm. the problem that we have in our life. Mm -hmm. That's what the Pharisees did a lot of times. That's right. It'd be amazing to see what happens if people put their lives, if they truly laid their lives next to Scripture each day mm -hmm. and said, Holy Spirit, do surgery on my soul. Uh, I pray that your word would shape me. Um, it's not about me mastering the word. It's about the word mastering me. Uh, it would be amazing to see what would happen even in churches if that was our approach each and every day. Um, Brandy Mizell says financial struggles can be a distraction with job losses and business closures. Um, Brother Ronald, I'll put you on the spot here. What would you say to folks who, uh, in their race, their their walk with Christ, they get hit with a job loss, they feel discouraged, uh, maybe even have some doubts about the goodness of God, they just feel down on their luck. What kind of encouragement, you've, you've pastored for many, many years, what kind of encouragement would you give to somebody who just feels distracted and discouraged and down because they've been, you know, they've been dealt a blow like that, they've lost a job? As hard as it will be to accept this, what I'm going to say, God knows what's going on, and he has a plan in all of it. We don't understand it. We can't comprehend why he has permitted us to go through that time. But through it all, if we will remain faithful to him, he will supply our needs, and in the outcome, we may get a better job than what we had to begin with. But to remain faithful to him, his word, and to his church, will help sustain people and get them through those difficult times. Because God said that he would supply our needs and that he would not leave us, but he would be there to strengthen us. And if we'll let his spirit guide us, God will see us through it. Amen. Rebecca says, yes, I think we have a tendency to compare ourselves to others on social media, what they're posting, what they're doing with their life, what decisions they're making, and how they're responding to certain things. We can get muddled in the mix of, uh, of comparing our lives to others instead of focusing on the life that God has called you to live. Hope that clarifies. It does. 
And on, on social, what we see, it's, it's funny how we compare our lives to people on social media because that's a highlight reel. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's, like, every time somebody posts something, how many, like, before you post something on social media like a, or a picture on, on Instagram or whatever, how many times do you stop and look at it and make sure that the angle's right and the lighting's right and be like, no, nah, I need to retake that. Yeah. We, we make sure that it's perfect before we put it out there. And so we're only, when we're comparing ourselves to social media, we're only comparing to what what people are trying to put out the best version of themselves instead of reality. That's right. I've heard it said that when you get caught up in that comparison game, you're comparing your behind-the-scenes footage with their highlight reel. Yeah. And, and so you're not seeing that it took them 25 shots yeah. and they scrolled through 15 different filters and they threatened their kids' lives <laughs> 17 times to sit still and to keep their hands to each other before they took that shot. And then what the enemy will do is that he will take that stage shot of that person's life or what they're doing or their new car or their uh, their life that just looks so perfect. And there you are sitting in, you know, maybe in a situation where you've lost your job. You've been sitting in a situation where you've got relationship struggles and the enemy will take that and he will use that comparison game uh, to keep your eyes off of what Rebecca said there, that um, we need to focus on the life that God's called you to. And all of us have struggles, all of us have baggage, all of us have behind the scenes footage. It's just people, that's just not a popular thing people put out on social media. I think we need to start a movement, right? Like people posting their behind the scenes footage, (laughs) real life, right? Um, But that's a, that's a good word there. Uh, Marie Bryan says, God takes us through valleys so we can enjoy the mountains more. Amen. That's so true. I appreciate you interacting with that, and and I just simply wanted to acknowledge for a moment that we have all of us have those things that weigh us down, all of us have those things that distract us from the race and keep our eyes off of the prize and off of the finish line, uh, that get our minds off of you know remembering why we run and who we're running for, and that His opinion is the only one that matters, and living for His glory is the only thing that matters, and. The only encouragement I want to give you is I run. I just got back into running like a month ago, so I'm not a great runner right now, but I'm, I'm back to running. And something that I refuse to do, this is just my personal thing, I will not stop. No matter if I get down to a little, little jog, right, I just refuse to stop running. And I think that can translate over into our, our spiritual life is, you know, when it comes to running the race, when you get into those – difficult stretches just be committed to to not stop running and that what that could look like is hey you know what I don't feel like getting into the word today but I'm going to get into the word I don't feel like going to God in prayer right now but I'm going to choose to do that those thoughts in my mind that uh, right now are giving me a little bit of temporary comfort as I'm feeling sorry for myself and those self that self-pity sometimes that I can that party I can throw for myself no I'm going to choose to take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to the Lord so all right Let's, uh, let's spend some time praying. Um, let, me, uh, let me get some prayer requests from you. We have some here on the list. I'm actually going to list those off, and I'll start us off in prayer. One thing that's not on your prayer guide, uh, Terry Tyndall. Terry, uh, he's doing okay. I want to say this at the beginning of this because it could have been a lot worse. Uh, he's a surveyor or helps with some surveying, and they were out in a, a wooded area, and they were going through chopping down some trees. You know, a friend in front of him or his worker in front of him was chopping down some trees. And, uh, of course, I guess that leaves some sharp edges on those trees that he's chopping down. And Terry uh, tripped and his fell and his side was impaled by a tree or a, uh, a sharp point of a, of a branch. And it went in several inches, but praise God it missed his organs. He's at home and that's healing. His Sunday school class is caring for him. And, uh, but y'all uh, lift Terry up in prayer. That could have been a lot worse. God was obviously looking out for him. Uh, So that's not on your prayer guide. Please add that to your prayer guide. Miss Debbie Lewis, we need to pray for her. Surgery's coming up on uh, the 11th, which is tomorrow. She actually just mentioned that. Was that just mentioned? Yeah. Oh, yep. Great minds think alike, Miss Debbie. (laughs) All right. Uh, Miss Sherry Updike had hand surgery, and I checked with Fred, and she's doing good. Ms. Kathy Oliver has abdominal hernia repair on June 23rd. Uh, Ms. Kathy Birch, we got this wrong, I think, last week. She didn't break both wrists. She broke um, one wrist in two places. So, but we still need to continue to keep her in our prayers. 
Terry Davis began chemo on the 5th of June. We need to continue to pray for Terry as the cancer has returned there, but we're trusting God, lifting her up to the Lord in prayer and believing that he's going to perform a miracle again. Um, and then uh, Dick Oliver is doing well, and we pray that the pacemaker does what it's supposed to do. So those are our latest prayer requests and our prayer guide. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything else. Um, I believe that's it. And I'm going to look here at our comment section to make sure I'm not missing anything. Debbie says her surgery. And Linda Howard's asking for prayer for her brother Al, has diabetes, and is now having kidney issues. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day, and I just thank you for our church, our church family who is all gathered digitally tonight, online, uh, here, and uh, even already, Father, I appreciate the, the fruitful discussion that we've had. We don't have all the answers, and it's more clear to me and us than ever that we don't know all the answers and we don't understand all the uh, intricacies and layers to all the complex issues and challenges and problems that we are facing, not just in our nation but across the world. But we do know this. We do know that the enemy is behind division. We know that the enemy is behind all of the messiness and, and all of uh, so much of this stuff going on. But, Lord, we know that you have won the battle. The victory is yours. And so even when we're in the middle of, of ruins, even when we're in the middle of confusion, even when we're in, the, we're in the middle of what feels like just deep strife, we know that we can look to you. You remain forever the king and commander of the universe you have triumphed over hell you have triumphed over sin and those of us who are in christ we know that we can look to you and trust you that you are in complete control and that you will help us move forward in the right way and so lord there's so much division in our nation uh, lord there seems to be so much division in our churches across our nation but lord we pray that you would step in as the Prince of Peace to help us experience the peace that only you can bring and in the harmony that only you can bring into relationships. Help all of us, Lord, to be humble and to be teachable, uh, to love one another. And uh, Lord, I just uh, lift this entire situation up to you. We can't fix it because the problem stems from sin in the heart of man. And we know that you are the only one who can fix that through the power of your gospel and the work of your spirit within the hearts of sinners saved by grace. Lord, I pray over these prayer requests. I pray for Miss Debbie as she is preparing for her surgery tomorrow. Lord, I pray she gets some good rest tonight. I pray that you would, uh, Lord, work through the physicians and uh, the procedure that's going to happen. And Lord, we just lift her up to you, believing that you, the great physician, has all this under control. And then we just plead the blood of Jesus over her, Lord. I pray that it would go smoothly and that you would work there in a mighty way. Lord, I pray for David Harding, who is having heart surgery on the 10th of June, which was actually today. And Lord, I thank you, Father, for uh, Brother David, and Lord, I just pray that you would help him to recover. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would restore his health uh, fully, and uh, we believe you can do it. Lord, I pray for Miss Sherry as she's continuing to recover from her hand surgery. We thank you that it was successful. And Lord, we just pray that she would recover the use of her hand and, Lord, you would just remove any of the challenges there that uh, she's been facing. I pray for Miss Kathy Oliver. She is uh, uh, preparing for that abdominal uh, surgery on the 23rd. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, again, help her get some rest as she prepares for that. Lord, I pray that you'd alleviate any fears, uh, any apprehension that she might have. And, Lord, that you would just wrap her up in your arms and carry her uh, to that day of the surgery and through it and beyond. I pray for Miss Kathy Birch. Lord, I thank you for uh, how you're already healing her arm. And Lord, I just thank you for uh, Lord, what we're going to trust is a, just a complete restoration of her, her health and her wrist. And Lord, we lift her up to you. I pray you continue to work there. And I pray for Miss Terry, Father. Miss Terry's been, Terry, Terry Davis has been through so much. And uh, just to see her faith in you and how she just has been unwavering in the way that she trusts you. It's been such a testimony and it's been so wonderful. And so, Father, I just lift her up to you, Lord. She's began this chemo, Lord. I pray that you would use it. We're thankful for that medical technology and advancement that you use to bring about healing. But, Lord, we know even beyond all of those things that you can reach through and in a supernatural way you can touch her body. We pray you do that. I pray for our brother uh, Dick Oliver, Lord. I, I'm thankful he's doing well, and I pray you continue to use that pacemaker to do what it's designed 
to do. And uh, Lord, I pray for uh, Miss Linda Howard's uh, brother, Al. Uh, he has diabetes, has, has some health issues, he's having kidney problems. And Lord, I just pray that you would intervene and Lord, that you would move in a mighty way and that you would just again touch his, his physical body with your healing touch as only you can. And Lord, I pray, I don't know where he is at spiritually, Father, but I pray that you would use this situation and this trial to drive him to the sufficiency of Christ and that you'd use it, use it to draw him closer to yourself. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Ronald, would you share with us um, what the Lord's been teaching you this week? All right, in most conversations that we have, we hear all of the negative things that are going on. And we often stop and think, how can I change? And, and this was referred to last week, I believe. How can I change the course of this conversation? Make it more positive and about things that are uplifting. Well, the Lord tells us in the book of Psalms 66 and verse 16, Come and hear all, you, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. When we begin to tell people what God has done for us, it begins to not only lift us up, but to encourage them and lift them up also and help them get beyond all the negative things that are going on in, in their life and in our country and give them some hope that God's still here and God's still going to be with us and he's going to see us through these things. Now, if you and I were to take a trip from here to Atlanta, Georgia in the same automobile, time would not even be enough there for me to tell you all the good things that God has done in my life. And you stop and think how he, he convicted you of sin. As uneasy as that may have been for you, it was a great thing because if he had not convicted you of sin, you would have never turned to him. You stop and think of the fact that when you didn't deserve it, God sent his son to die for you on the cross. And if he had not died for you, you'd still be bound for eternity in hell. Some of you may have seen it this week or, or last week. A, a young lady holding up a sign, I'm headed for hell and proud of it. Well, my friend, I'm he headed for heaven and proud of it, not for hell. That, not, that's for sure. So tell people the good things that have happened. Share the good things in your life re rather than the negative things. Mm -hmm. We all have negative aspects in our life, but people need to hear the good things. You turn on the TV, what do you hear? Negative. You turn on the radio, what do you hear? Negative. You talk to your neighbor, what do you hear? Negative. But what do they hear from us? Let us speak the good things that Christ has done for us. And Brother Ronald, I was, as you were speaking, you know, maybe that's a good answer to that question about what do we do with all this whether it's fake news or negative news um, and the division that people feel like the media seems to be, um, you know, uh, igniting, you know. Um, you know, what's the answer to that? What you just shared may be uh, a solution may have been right in front of us the entire time and we didn't realize the, the power of it, the power of the good news that we have to share with folks each day of Christ dying in our place, um, in the forgiveness and the new life that we can experience by repenting and believing the gospel, uh, but also the power of just personal testimony, the power of a story, the power of sharing with someone about, hey, can I just tell you how God's yeah. working in my life this week? Yeah. Hey, can I tell you how God moved in, in a situation a few weeks ago in my family where it just looked like this was an immovable op obstacle? So we can counteract that negativity and that negative news flow uh, in that way. That's a great word. I appreciate it. All right, let me see if there's any. Um, oh, wait, we got some prayer requests. All right. Tori's uh, asking for prayer for her grandpa. Had an MRI Friday and found that he has multiple broken bones in his back, a few herniated discs, and some lesions in his back. A lot to hear at one appointment. My goodness. We will definitely pray for him. Thanks, Tori. Uh, Linda Copestick has given us an update on her mom. Uh, we've been praying for her as mom's out of the hospital in a new rehab. When she's released from this rehab, we've decided no more hospitals. Hospice is coming to take care of her at home. Pray COVID clears up uh, there in, uh, in Maryland 
uh, in time for me to go up uh, to be with her. All right, Linda, so we're going to pray for your mom. I'm sorry to hear um, that you're making those decisions and having to uh, work through that. So we're going to pray for her, but also going to pray for you because I know your heart's heavy and you want to be there with her. So, and then Kelly Holland's asking for prayer for uh, the mental and emotional help for everyone. This unrest in society has saddened and maddened so many people. So, to pray for the hearts and the emotions of people all over the nation. All right. Go ahead. Yep. Father, we're so thankful that even in the most troubling time in our life and in our nation, we can come to you and find peace and comfort and relax knowing that you are aware of everything that goes on and you understand the situations that we are facing. And God, even though some of the situations may be difficult for us to understand and even to cope with, I pray that before we make any judgment, before we make any statements, we would stop and say, Lord, what do you want me to think? What do you want me to feel? What do you want me to say? That would bring honor to you even in this difficult time. God, you, you've heard the request of these that have listed here. Miss Linda's mom, she's been concerned about her for a long time. And, and God, it, it, it seems as though maybe you're preparing for her to come to be with you. And I pray that you would be with her mom and that you'd strengthen her and that, that she might have the assurance that she is your child and that you'd be with Miss Linda as she goes and, and prepares to be there with her mother. I pray, God, that you would give her strength and, and help her to be just an encourager to her mother during these last days of her life. God, I pray that you would be with the mental uh, capacity and the emotional state of, of our nation and especially, Lord, with the leaders of our nation. God, we know that when in this scripture, when a, a leader of a nation followed you and turned to you, the nation followed you. So God, I pray that the leaders of our nation would have an, a heart opening experience to let them see just what they need to do and how they need to respond to, to you and and God, those that are tearing your word up and throwing it away because someone else stood and held it up, I pray, God, that your spirit would deal with them and that you would touch the lives of each one. And, Father, I just pray that you would be with all these that are on our list, that are unspoken even, that you would let your spirit deal with each one of them, those that will be going into surgery tomorrow and throughout the next few weeks. I pray, God, that you will guide the doctor's hands and that you will give that patient the, the peace of mind and the assurance that you're there with them in that operating room. I pray for their families and that you'll strengthen them. God, I pray for our nation and the condition that it is in. We know that you can change things when your people get our hearts right with you and begin to live the way you want us to live. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Reverend Zortman. Yeah, so um, right now uh, in my uh, Bible reading plan, um, it's I'm going through uh, Deuteronomy right now, and um, one of the things that, that, one of the passages that I read uh, a couple of days ago, that like the the context of what's going on in in Deuteronomy is the the people of Israel. It's at the end of the forty years of wandering in the wilderness, and so this new generation, the 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 first generation, had as a punishment for not being obedient and going into the land when God said so. They wandered for forty years, and an entire generation died off, and so their children um, were then the next generation was getting ready to. Um, to go into the promised land and Moses is giving them this kind of final speech. He's reminding them of, of God's law, um, how they can live in relationship with God and, um, and he, he's giving them warnings as they're about to go in and one of the things that I read yesterday uh, or, or a couple days ago was um, Moses warning the people 
So whenever you start to prosper, whenever you um, things are going well, and um, and and what you're doing starts to multiply, um, and things are going really well, don't don't lose sight of pursuing the Lord. Don't don't lose sight of worshiping Him because we we have a huge tendency. You see it throughout the entire Old Testament history of of Israel. When things start going well, they start to, to fall off again and and um, forget to pursue the Lord. And I think we can do the same thing. When things start going well, um, uh, sometimes God has to has to remind us to to keep our eyes fixed on Him. Um, and I think even whenever I know for me, whenever things start going well um, uh, spiritually, I can start to grow complacent. Things are things are going pretty well, so I can kind of hit cruise control for a little bit. Um, and just kind of go through the motions of, of Bible study and and um, and kind of and I can I can pray um, whenever spend time in, the, in prayer whenever whenever it's convenient or whatever and, I, and you start hitting cruise control and then it, it's things are going well and I forget to to be intentional about pursuing the Lord and I always constantly have to be reminded that um, when it comes to to our pursuit of holiness we don't get any days off. Um, we, uh, you know, when it comes to, to like our, our physical work schedule, we there there uh, we need like work hard. But there are times whenever like the Lord has, has has told us there are times where you need to take a break, you need to take a rest, spend time with your family. But when it comes to holiness, those those rest days don't include taking a break from pursuing the Lord and holiness and pursuing Christ likeness. Um, and and we don't get days off from that where we can hit cruise control. Um, and one of the songs that we that we sang in here on on sunday was come thou fount and one of the one of the last verses in there um i i i love because it says um i'm prone to wander like i feel this tugging of where i'm prone to wander away from the god that i love and we need him to 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 keep a hold of us and and to to point us back to him so that that's something i always have to be reminded of and so that's um kind of my encouragement to you all as well is to remember um, to not grow complacent or hit cruise control um, when things start going well, but to, to remain intentional about pursuing the Lord. Awesome reminder. Thank you, man. All right, let me ask you a question, Brandon, because um, I'm going to ask you to pray. We've got um, two uh, new requests here. Uh, Mimi is asking for her son. Ronnie ablation procedure this Friday and Penny is uh, Penny just said hey I'm late better late than never though. Um, she, he's Robert uh, I don't think Robert threw that out there yet he did I don't think he so. did um, but she's asking for prayer for her dad <laughs> he's out of the hospital now and in rehab so we need to continue to pray for him so those are the two prayer requests that we need to pray for but we also need to be praying for you guys because on Monday y'all are headed to camp so uh, that is the one thing we were able to to do this summer uh, to salvage I guess you could say is student camp uh, because of the efforts that Snowbird went to uh, to make sure it's going to be a safe place for the students to uh, to attend and you guys are going to have to do a lot of uh, like I think students aren't even allowed to get on the bus if they have a fever is that mm -hmm. right so you guys are going to the extreme to make sure everyone's staying safe as well. And uh, then you guys are going to be pretty much together all week. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be mixing with the other campers. Uh, but you guys are pretty much going to be staying together as a family the entire week. But what are some specific things? You've been to camp before. You've attended camp as a camper. You've taken the students to camp as a leader. What are some things that our church family can pray specifically for um, as the group goes to camp mm -hmm. next week? Uh, a lot. Um, you pray for pray for our group, um, our chaperones and students that that are going. Um, but then you can also pray for um, uh, the staff, the staffers that are working at, at Snowbird. Um, the, there's several of us here at, at church who've had an opportunity to work there, um, and um, it's working at, at Snowbird um, and working summer camp there is um, very rewarding, but at the same time, it's very draining. Um, and very exhausting, and so you can pray for them as well. For for us, for for our group of students and chaperones, um, obviously just pray for for safety um, on the way there. 
pray that nobody, when we take temperatures, that nobody registers a fever, that we don't even have to worry about that, um, and that everything goes smoothly, um, that travels um, go smoothly on the way up there, um, and then pray for, you know, the, the one of the purposes of summer camp is it's a chance to get out of a normal routine, to step away from distractions, and be able to spend quality time with, with one another, which we haven't been able to do since uh, three months ago. Um, I think I think tomorrow is three months since the, the last time that we were together as youth group. Yeah. And um, so uh, this is an awesome opportunity for us to be able to do that. And it's an awesome opportunity when you're removed, when you're out of a different, in, when you're in a new environment that's away from distractions, you can see um, see Christ more clearly and focus on him and reflect a little bit on, hey, how, how, how can I pursue him better? Um, so um, pray for, for salvations. If, if we have students that are going that don't know the Lord yet, um, pray for that to happen and pray for uh, us as leaders and students to be refreshed and to see where we can pursue the Lord better. Um, and, uh, but then also pray for, pray for the staffers that are, are working at, at Snowbird. We'll have several summer staffers that will be working directly with our students um, and we'll be building relationships with them during the week. So you can pray for, for those relationships to, to click and, and because those relationships create opportunities to have gospel conversations and discipleship conversations and, and that's huge. Um, and so pray for, pray for that. But also pray for, um, for Brody and the other guys that are going to be uh, preaching, the other directors that will be preaching and teaching during that week because the way that they're having to do camp this summer, summer camp is already exhausting um, for, on, on a staffer side, but especially this summer, the way that they're having to do things where they're rotating groups through and can only have so many together at a time, some of those guys, like Brody and some of those guys, are going to be teaching or preaching like, a long time every day and so it's going to be extremely draining for them so pray that the lord will sustain them that he'll give them the words that they need to say and give them the energy to uh to continue uh moving forward so, so pray for salvations for students pray for energy <laughs> for the count our counselors and the camp leaders and just pray that it's a you know summer camp i'm telling you has some of you can testify to this uh, those of you who may have uh you gone to camp when you were a teenager and God impacted your life. There are a lot of testimonies out there of people who God um, used a summer camp, a night at a summer camp, a sermon at a summer camp, a conversation at a summer camp to change the trajectory of a young person's life. And so that's what we're praying for. Snowbird is a, and they preach the gospel. It's a great camp. Um, and you guys have also have the rule where they can't take their cell phones, right? Mm hmm so we have all these and if I didn't have to I wouldn't be taking mine either like well, I wish I could take a break from mine. all these teenagers going to camp they're gonna spend a week away from their cell phones which is probably gonna feel like torture the first day <laughs> but they'll actually uh, not be doing this as much and have their uh, you know their eyes up you know talking with people more and um, looking out the window at trees going by like you know People used to do when they go on road trips, and I've never noticed these before. And then, but they get to the end of the week, and um, hopefully, God will move in their life even more because of that. So, mm-hmm. pray you don't run into any problems or issues. Um, you know, one one funny story I remember is a as a middle school boy. There was a middle school boy on one of our trips that uh, we got uh, about three quarters of the way to camp on the first day there. And he came up and said, Brother John, I, I don't have any more money. <laughs> he spent all of his spending money on the way there. I said, what did you get? He had gotten a few big, uh, you know, 12 or 24 packs of Cokes at a rest stop or like at a gas station and a bunch of snacks. He was very charitable. He got them all for his friends, but he had no more spending money. Uh, and we hadn't even got to camp yet. So camp's full of adventure, so keep them in your prayers. And... Yep, pray that they have a safe trip there. They leave early Monday morning. Uh, also keep in prayer our, our VBS. That, uh, it's going to be a virtual VBS, but we're praying that God uses that. The kids' ministry, Michelle, and uh, a lot of volunteers are working to film that this week. And I'm going to ask one more. Here's a, a last call for any prayer requests. Brandon's going to close us in prayer, and then we'll start signing off. Jennifer Daly is uh, Carol Carol ablation surgery on uh, the 17th. Uh, Kelly Holland, the recovery of Alice and Lindsay uh, since emergency surgery last week, uh, perforated colon. So pray for her as well. Anybody else? 
speak now or email us later. All right, pray for us, man. Dear Lord, thank you once again for an opportunity to come before you in prayer. Um, thank you for an opportunity for us to gather in unity. Um, uh, right now, uh, it's kind of hard to see uh, uh, much unity uh, in our nation, in our, in our community. Um, but you, uh, you've adopted us into your family uh, to, be, um, to be unified as, as the body of Christ. Um, even uh, even in our, our diversity, you've you've created all of us unique, um, and uh, you've you've chosen to adopt um, all all kinds of people from from every uh, tribe, nation, and tongue um, uh, to all be part of your family um, because you you desire to show that that you're creating a body of Christ that is unified even in our diversity. Um, I pray that we as your children would um, would exemplify that um, and would show that uh, to those uh, around us that we would uh, speak the truth in, in love uh, to each other and to our, our communities and that we would um, put Christ uh, ahead of our own um, desires um, that we would uh, seek to glorify you uh, above all else um, uh, pray for uh, several um, uh, health concerns that, that we have in our in our church family. Um, pray for uh, two uh, ablation procedures uh, for uh, one for Ronnie, um, and uh, also for uh, Carol um, coming up uh, soon. I pray for both of these procedures that um, things would go smoothly, that there would be uh, no complications, um, and that uh, you would guide a uh, surgeon's hands. Um, pray. Uh, for uh, Penny and, and Robert's dad, um, uh, that uh, you would help him uh, to continue recovering. Uh, now he's um, out of the hospital and rehabbing. I pray that you would continue to move that process along uh, smoothly um, and that there wouldn't be any complications um, and that you would continue to, to heal his body. Um, I pray uh, for Kelly's uh, boss's fiance, Allison. Um, uh, she's had a uh, perforated colon um, and had uh, had emergency surgery um, last week uh, that we prayed about and I pray um, that uh, everything went uh, went smoothly with that and um, that you would uh, give uh, doctors wisdom on how to how to move forward and how uh, to uh, help her uh, recover um, and uh, pray for for all of these that um, uh, that you would, uh, your hand would be on their on their bodies. That you would, um, you as the, as the great physician would heal them. Um, that your will would be done in in those circumstances. I pray um, for our group as we as we travel next week to go uh, to camp in North Carolina. Uh, that you would give us safe travels. That you would uh, prepare our hearts, um, uh, both our, our students' hearts and uh, us as chaperones. That we would all uh, grow, that we would uh, grow closer to each other and closer to you. I pray for um, for the staffers that are uh, anticipating us uh, coming, that you would prepare them as well um, and that you would uh, strengthen them um, and uh, give us an awesome, safe week uh, and bring us back home safely. Uh, and I pray that you would prepare our hearts and mold our hearts to pursue you more faithfully. Uh, I pray uh, for the rest of our day uh, that we would continue uh, to pursue you well, and that we continue to glorify you in everything we say and do. We never pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Brandon. Um, I saw another prayer request. We're going to start signing off here, but I saw another prayer request that Brandy Mizell submitted for her grandmother, Joyce Becton, uh, who's having so, sur uh, shoulder surgery on the 19th. So, Miss Joyce, we are praying for her, uh, praying for you, and y'all make sure you jot that down to pray for Miss Joyce surgery on the 19th on her shoulder. Uh, so thank y'all for joining us tonight. Uh, again, I want to remind you, uh, again, we have Thursday night service this week. Uh, we have uh, plenty of spots still available, available in that thir Thursday night service. We also have available spots in the 1030 service. So y'all sign up, come join us. It was a great time last weekend. And then moving beyond this weekend into next week, no more Thursday night. And uh, we'll have the 9 o'clock that you'll need to make reserv reservations for. And then the 1030 after the Sunday, the 1030 moving forward will be just come on and we'll uh, have, a, have a seat for you. We'll be ready for you. All right, let me end with this uh, question, all right? What is one thing that you cannot live without? Name one thing that you could not live without. 
If you need to jet, if you need to go, don't feel bad. I see a lot of people still hanging on here. Uh, but this will be a fun question for us to end on. What is one thing that you cannot live without? You guys want to? You guys want to uh, give an answer to that? I'm assuming we shouldn't give a too literal answer. Like, you can give air. a little. <laughs> yeah. You can. Mm. What is one thing you cannot live without? Don't be shy. Come on, y'all, give me an answer. What do you think, brother? On it. Well, biblically, I need to say without Christ. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do this. All right, we're going to assume that everybody's answer would be Jesus. All right, that everybody's answer would be spiritual, which that would be the right answer. All right, but let's say beyond that, what is something that you just really enjoy that would be tough for you to live without? Um, so Miss Kathy said Jesus. She answered that for all of us. So all of us got that out of the way. And that's the most important. That's the right answer. That's always the right answer. Uh, what's something else that you would throw out there? All right, Miss Debbie says my husband. Joe McIntyre says uh, my spouse. Uh, Ed says his Bible. I would agree with that. Uh, what's something else that you would say here? Emily says her family. What's something that you like depend on each day, something that you enjoy that would be tough for you to live without? All right, here, now we're getting honest. Nikki Mizell says, my family and Rocky Road ice cream. I'm going to say coffee in the morning. Coffee Ooh. is an important one. I just switched my answer. Yes. <laughs> Andrea Cook says, my baby brother. Is that your sister? Yeah. Look at there. From, from New Mexico. That's your big sister in New Mexico. Hey, Andrew, nice to meet you. Over the uh, airwaves here. Miss Donna says, my husband. My, my Ami says, my spouse. Brandy Mizell says, Wi-Fi. Can you imagine life right now without the Internet? It's hard to imagine. Let the kids answer that when they come back from camps next week. That's right. So we've got some more coffee answers. Anybody else got some fun answers they want to throw out there before we sign off? You guys are kind of being shy tonight. Something that you cannot live without. My husband and children. All right. Appreciate you answering. Appreciate you playing along. Anybody else before I close it down? All right. All right, here we go. Now we're getting on. Out. Whoa, whoa, now we're getting on. All right. <laughs> Uh, Rebecca says, besides family and spouse, I would say air conditioning. Good answer. Uh, Mimi says, microwave and dishwasher. <laughs> uh, Joe says, Xbox. There you go. Uh, Kelly says, the fur babies. Very good. All right, church, family, a lot of y'all still hanging on, so I just want to tell you once again, we hope you have a blessed week. Uh, continue to seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Uh, continue to seek to walk in his footsteps. We need the church doing that now more than ever before. And so we're praying for you. Cannot wait to see a group of you tomorrow night and the rest of you on Sunday. And it is just such a blessing to be able to meet back together in person. And if you're not able to meet with us on um, our on-campus gatherings, please just don't feel bad about that and you keep worshiping the Lord in this way with us live as long as you need. You guys got any departing words of wisdom? Keep looking up. Christ is coming. I think that said it all. I'm fresh <laughs> out of wisdom for today. All right. Love you guys. Y'all have a good week. We'll see y'all later.